The prophet of God William Marion Branham, relates a story that his former campaign manager Ern Baxter, had when they were boys, years back in Vancouver, British Columbia. British Columbia, commonly abbreviated as BC, is the westernmost province of Canada, situated between the Pacific Ocean and the Rocky Mountains. The capital of British Columbia is Victoria, and its largest city is Vancouver. Having been raised in Canada, Brother Baxter says, Arnold Schwinn and Company was going to give one of their best Schwinn bicycle brands for any boy who could ride a 12-inch plank for half a city block without falling off. Like any other expert bicycle rider, Ernie said, Brother Brandham, I could get on my bicycle and go downtown, get an armload of groceries, and come back and never even touch the handlebars. I could turn the corners, going around the streetcars, automobiles, and never touch the handlebars. I could ride set backwards on it and ride the same as I could forward. It didn't make any difference to me. Certainly. I was sure I could win the contest without a shadow of doubt. On the other hand, many of the boys around the city who considered themselves fine riders thought they could ride it. Even to the point of getting the Schwinn bicycle. These boys would go downtown for their mama and get a basket of groceries, put it under their arm, and ride back, and never even touch the handlebars like Hearn Baxter would do. So each one knew he was going to win this contest, and in fact, they regarded themselves champions. Well, Ern Baxter said, when I got up there, knowing that I was a genius, I was sure I could ride that. So, I got up on there, I didn't ride 25 feet till I fell off, and another one got on. He too fell off. Now, they had a little old sissy boy there, that just, you know, mama's boy like, and none of them cared very much for him such as to fellowship with him, cause he looked like a little, sickly, type of a boy there, that many at first sight dismissed as void of any single bicycle stunt and every other competitor actually considered themselves a better class than him, but well against the odds, he entered the contest too. Now, Brother Baxter says, he wasn't very much of a rider, and we were sure he wouldn't even get started. On the other hand all those boys who could go downtown, and get their mother's groceries, and come back without even touching the handlebars, they unfortunately all fell off. Now, some and more competitors got up, and every one of them fell off the board. One by one they tried to ride it, and all of them fell off. As each competitor's number was called, and they got onto the board, they too fell off. As they were looking at that sissy boy, in their minds they said, My! That boy's always got his hands on the handlebars looking at other competitors. We sure can now try that fellow. Well, that fellow happened to be the last one to compete. Somehow, when this little guy stood at the tip of the board, and they pushed him off down the plank, he rode right straight to the end and went off, just as perfect as none of them could ride. After he had won the bicycle, Ern Baxter said, we all got around him and asked him how he managed to do such as we had thought was simple. He said, I'll tell you fellows the reason you lost the race. First and foremost, he said, you all are much better riders than I am, but, you made a mistake. I prospered by your mistake, when you all got on your bicycles, and they shoved you off, I noticed something. You were like this, trying to keep it on the board, see, when you look down. Like this, as you ride, you get nervous, see. But on my part, when they shoved me, I kept my eye on the end, and kept steady. But many of you were looking down, like this, trying to keep your bicycle on the board. Personally, I didn't care what was going on, down here, but, I was looking at the end, so I held steady. If I had to look at what was going on around me all the time, I definitely would have 
straight off the road too, but, I looked at what was at the end, kept my eye there, so that I could be steady. Therefore, the whole secret is tied to this, you won't wiggle if you watch the end. See, that's it friend, don't look down here what's going today or tomorrow, keep your eye on the end and be steady. Yeah. See? If you go to watch it, well, if I don't do this, if I don't do this, if I see, you're going to fall off sure as the world. See, yeah. just keep your eye on the end, and at the end of every life, you meet Jesus. That's right. So just keep your eye on the end and be steady. Let us pray. Don't pay attention to this present condition. Look at the end, the coming of the Lord. I'd be a miserable person now if I looked around now and seen what was going on, but I'm looking to Him, the author and finisher of the faith. Christ at the end when he'll come and say, why did you colonize yourself? Why did you take sides here and take sides there? Why wasn't you big enough to look up here? I know that I love whosoever will let him come. Amen. I say we're brethren now. Let's stand right together. Amen. There you are. Notice. Oh, if that isn't a lesson to the church. What's going on here? What's the end? And keep study. Stay with God's word. God keeps his word. Now the difference between Caleb and Joshua and the others, they were looking at the circumstances, and Caleb and Joshua was looking to what God said. God said, it's yours. He gave the promise. God's obligated to his promise to keep his word. Now what do you look at? If you're looking today to find God to keep his word, he'll keep it. But keep your eye on the word. Just move with the word. Don't leave it. Stay right with the word. That's the main thing. That's it. Watch the end and keep steady. Just keep moving on. I'd be discouraged tonight. If it wasn't for that, I'm watching the end. Just keep in study. Move on. No matter what takes place, just keep, don't look at that. Just keep looking at the end. That's where you meet God down there at the end. That's where the rewards are given out. Don't drop off here. One to the end. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Scripture. All of you are better riders than I am. You know that. It said, because I can't ride without holding the handlebars. And neither can I go without holding the cross, you see. This word has got to be my life. That's what you're saying. I, I, I can't, can't speak without this handlebar to guide this Holy Spirit that moves me and directs me. That's what we're to do. Yeah. Don't look at these little things now. Did this one do this or that one do that? Watch the end and keep steady. Christ is coming. Watch the end. Just keep steady. Don't notice what's going on now. Watch what's going to go on out yonder. At the end time, when we're going to have to stand and, and give an account for our lives. David wasn't watching that little old Benjamin throw dirt on him. He's crippled anyhow. He never noticed him. He wouldn't even let the guard cut his head off. Let him alone. God told him to do that. God told him to curse me. Let him alone. For David knew that someday he was returning in power. That Benjamin would have his time.